This is a presentation on why Satoshi Nakamoto always planned to reveal himself. The Bitcoin white paper was titled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, authored by Satoshi Nakamoto, and was released to a cryptographic mailing list on the 31st of October 2008. What was significant about this was that it expressed for the first time in history how to commoditize digital data, and it did this through a process called blockchain technology, where every bit of data uploaded to the network was given a hash number, which linked it to the previous bit of data that had also been uploaded, meaning all the data was linked together. And what gave it credibility as a commodity network was that all of these bits of data contained a digital signature, meaning all the users of the network accepted responsibility and accountability for the data they uploaded. And in the white paper of section 2 under transactions, it clearly says, we define an electronic coin as a chain of digital signatures. So the white paper was released on the 31st of October 2008, and the network was started by Satoshi Nakamoto on the 3rd of January 2008. 2009, with the creation of the Genesis block. And from this moment forward, every single chain of digital signatures leads back there. So in the same way that all roads lead to Rome, all chains of digital signatures lead back to Satoshi Nakamoto. It was on the 23rd of April 2011 that Satoshi Nakamoto wrote one of his final emails to Mike Hearn, in which he said, I've moved on to other things. It's in good hands with Gavin and everyone. And as we know now, the other things that he'd moved on to was blockchain I it was shortly after this, on the 9th of June of the same year, that Dr. Craig Wright is first referenced in relation to Bitcoin. This reference was stated in the creation of the Tulip Trust, that we now know contains what are called the Satoshi Coins. The Tulip Trust document states to whom it may concern, and CC'd in Dr. Craig Wright. It reads, I acknowledge the trust and the transfer of Bitcoins to this trust. I have full control of all software and the keys used to manage Bitcoin as of this date, Thursday, the 9th of June 2011. It carries on. It is agreed that I, David Kleiman, shall become the trustee for the transfer of the Satoshi I have received from Craig Wright. No record of this transaction will be filed in the US or Australia. The transfer is valued at 100,000 US dollars for Australian tax purposes. I acknowledge I, Dave Kleiman, have received 1,100,111 Bitcoin from Craig Wright. At the time of transfer, this is valued at around 100,000 US dollars. I will form a trust to be managed by at least three people but no more than seven at any time. All Bitcoin will be returned to Dr. Wright on January the 1st, 2020. On the 9th of June 2011, 1,100,111 Bitcoin represented approximately 42% of the entire circulating supply of Bitcoin at that time, which means it is highly unlikely that they could have been mined by anybody else other than the creator of the network himself, which points to the fact that Craig Wright is highly likely the creator of Bitcoin and the man behind the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto. So the questions need to be asked. Why use a pseudonym? Why step away from the project? And why set up a tulip trust containing 42% of the circulating supply at that time to be returned on the 1st of January 2020? And the answer is to provide the network with economic credibility to be classified as a commodity and therefore giving it economic value. You see, anyone can create a digital commodity, but what can't be replicated is the neutral size and growth of the network of 10 plus years. And it's this organic growth of the network without any central point of authority, control or influence that enables Bitcoin to be classified as a digital commodity. And if you class each year that goes by as a term, after 10 years, there is a 99.9% .9 chance that no other digital network will ever achieve this level of neutral size and growth. And because the network is economically competitive, any central point of anything becomes diluted over time. And so after a period of 10 years, you have a network with 10 years of neutral organic growth and no central point of authority control or failure. And it's this that attracts people to use it. Now, in order to create common accountability within the network so that there is no central point of control, it's essential that all users of the network are accountable to one another. And this is done through the chain 
chain of digital signatures. And with all the chains of signatures leading back to the start of the network at the Genesis block created by Satoshi Nakamoto, it was absolutely imperative and essential that Satoshi Nakamoto's identity eventually be revealed. This is so that no one could do anything on the network that nobody else would know about. It's this chain of digital signatures that will eventually expose any criminal activity taking place on the network. And it's this that those criminal elements in authority don't want. And so in 2017, those criminal elements in authority colluded with one another to attack the chain of signatures within Bitcoin. They called this alteration to the protocol SegWit, which segregated the digital signatures from the transaction data. Meaning that from that point on, all you were receiving was numbers on a screen. However, when that attempt failed to stop the chain of signatures, another attempt was tried again, this time in 2018, and the fork was called BCH, which stood for Bitcoin Cash. And this is why the original protocol and genuine Bitcoin with the only chain of signatures that goes right the way back to the Genesis block is now called Bitcoin Satoshi Vision and abbreviated to Bitcoin SV and has the ticker symbol BSV. In a court filing, Craig Wright stated that the keys to the Tulip Trust were returned to him via bonded courier on the 14th of January 2020 and has since been to court numerous times to prove who he is. It was on the 28th of June 2021 that Craig Wright solicitors put out a statement saying UK court awards Bitcoin creator default judgment in Bitcoin copyright infringement claim where Craig Wright was awarded copyright to the Bitcoin white paper as an anonymous Bitcoin blogger named Cobra refused to defend the claim. A few months later in November of the same year, a UK High Court judge, Martin Chamberlain, ruled that comments made by podcaster Peter McCormack that called Dr. Craig Wright a liar and a fraud in 2019 caused serious harm to Wright's reputation and ordered Peter McCormack to pay Dr. Wright another £90,000 in costs and had his appeal refused. And a few weeks after that, on December the 9th, another court case came to conclusion. This court case was reported on by international press. As you can see here, reported in the Times newspaper. It said, Craig Wright, the man claiming to be the inventor of Bitcoin, mined 1.1 million Bitcoins under the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto in 2009. It continued saying Bitcoin founder Craig Wright wins battle to keep his crypto billions. It was also reported on by The Guardian that wrote an article titled, Australian man Craig Wright wins US court battle for Bitcoin fortune worth billions. And the reason this court case was taking place was because, in the same way the central bankers concocted a plot to steal all the gold off the citizens in the United States in 1933, they had also concocted a plan to try and steal Satoshi Nakamoto's Bitcoin, using none other than Ira Kleiman, who was the stepbrother to the late David Kleiman, that was Craig Wright's best friend. But luckily for us, their plot failed. However, many people are still blissfully unaware of the fraud that was perpetrated on the Bitcoin network on the 24th of August 2017, when SegWit was implemented and the alternative protocol stole the ticker symbol BTC, along with the market price. There are going to be a lot of people asking a lot of questions when they eventually find out. And so, it's because of these two points that 1. All chains of signatures lead back to the starting point, which is Satoshi Nakamoto, and the fact that Dr. Craig Wright arranged for the Tulip Trust to be created and returned back to him on the 1st of January 2020 that we know Satoshi Nakamoto always planned to reveal himself. And if you're wondering why the trust was called the Tulip Trust, well, I have my own suspicions, and I think this might be it. If we look back in history at the largest and most famous financial bubbles, we can see the most famous one, being the Tulip Bubble of the 1600s, pales into insignificance into the bubble that is BTC. I suspect Satoshi Nakamoto knew that the bankers would try to corrupt it, which is exactly Exactly what they've done, which means the entire market of BTC is now one financial bubble. And that the Tulip Trust was initially created to prove Craig Wright was the creator of Bitcoin and had the intention of bursting it. So hold on to your hats, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. To find out more about Bitcoin, there are links in the description. There is a brief history of Bitcoin, the rise and rise of Craig Wright, shining a light on sovereign electronic cash, farmers food supply money, getting started in Bitcoin, what happened to Bitcoin, how can Bitcoin defeat the cabal and silverfish? I wish you love and light and all the best in everything. Um, yeah, I'm not surprised. I wasn't asked why I'm convinced Craig is Satoshi. Um, I posted on, on Reddit. He signed in my presence uh, the private, using the private key from block one, block number one, the very first mined Bitcoin block. Uh, on a computer that I'm convinced had not been tampered with, on software I'm convinced that had not been tampered with a message of my choosing.
And so that kind of sealed the deal for me, convincing me that he does have that private key. Uh, my interactions with him feel like this is the inventor of Bitcoin.